Hi, in this video we're going to talk about cyclic groups. So first let's look at a definition. A cyclic group is a group that can be generated by one element. So before I go into what it means to be generated by one element, let me just point out that a cyclic group is first and foremost a group. So you're going to need to understand what it means to be a group. And just as a quick reminder, a group is a set with a binary operation that has an identity element where each element in the group has an inverse and the binary operation is associative. Okay, so now let's go back to what it means to be a cyclic group. So what does it mean that the group can be generated by one element? We say an element, which we'll call G, generates the group if every element of the group can be obtained by repeatedly applying the group operation, or its inverse, to the element G. So if we have a group G with the binary operation star, we say that this is cyclic if we can find a generator G. And that means for any element x in G, we can write x entirely in terms of our generator G. So if we apply the binary operation star to G some number n times, then that will give us our element x. And this should be true for any element x in G. Now if we take this star as regular multiplication, then we know that this is just multiplying G with itself n times, and we can write that as G to the nth power. Then, since we said that any element x in our group g can be written entirely in terms of our generator little g, this tells us we can write our group like this, where we're assuming that the binary operation star is multiplication. So we know that if we continuously take g to the nth power for different integer values of n, we will eventually get our entire group g. And that tells us that little g is a generator for our group g, because we can write our group entirely in terms of our generator g. All right, so we've seen the group that's multiplicative. Let's try it with an additive group. So if we had our group g and the binary operation was addition, the idea is the same, but it's going to be written a little bit differently since our binary operation has changed. So in order to find a generator g for this group, we need to say that for any x in our group g, x can be written as g plus g plus g some number n times. So x is the result of adding our generator g to itself n number of times. And we can rewrite this as saying n times g. So in this case, we can write our group g as n times g, where n ranges over the integers. So to recap, we say that our group g is cyclic if we can find a generator g where every element in our group can be obtained by repeatedly applying the group operation, or its inverse, to our generator G. Now I want to introduce a new notation that's related to cyclic groups and generators. So if we have a group G with the binary operation star, and we say that little g is any element in our group, then we use this notation here where we have G in between two brackets to represent the smallest subgroup that contains the element G. So what is the smallest subgroup that contains G? Well, if we have G in our subgroup, remember that any group must be closed under the binary operation. So we know that G star G has to be in there as well, as well as G star G star G, and so on, as long as these are all unique and they don't repeat, we can keep on doing this and applying G to itself, and all these elements would have to be in our group. We also know that the identity element, which we'll call E, must be in our subgroup, and of course, we know that all of these elements must have inverses. So we need G inverse in our group, G star G inverse, the inverse of G star G star G, and so on. So if we take this set that includes all unique elements that you get from repeatedly applying the binary operation star to G, then this will be the smallest subgroup that contains G. And we can also see that G is a generator for this subgroup. So we say that this is equal to G, and this is the notation we use to represent the cyclic subgroup generated by our element G. So let me erase that now and clean it up a little bit. With what we just did, we were using an arbitrary binary operation star. But if we were to use the multiplicative operation for our group G, then we would see that this cyclic subgroup generated by our element G would look like this, where we know that one is the identity element for multiplication, and we know that repeatedly multiplying g with itself will just give us powers of g. And then we can just take that inverse as well by representing it as g inverse, g squared inverse, which we can represent as g to the negative 2, and so on. 
And if we were to use additive notation, we would get this subgroup, where we know that in this case, zero is the identity element, and repeated applications of addition to g would just give us the multiples of g, so g, 2g, 3g, and so on. And we also know that the inverse for addition is subtraction, so we would get negative g as the inverse to g, negative 2g as the inverse to 2g, and so on. So this would be our cyclic subgroup generated by our element g. So let's look at an example now. In this example, let's look at the set of integers with addition. So let's just take any element that's in this set, so any integer. Let's try 6, and let's write out what this subgroup would look like. So you can think of this as being the cyclic subgroup generated by the element 6 with this binary operation addition, or you can think about it as being the smallest subgroup that contains the element 6. So we can see that if we repeatedly add 6 to itself, we'll get 6, 12, 18, 24, and this will go on to infinity. Now if we add the inverse of 6, which equals negative 6, to itself, we'll get 0. If we add negative 6 to 0, we get negative 6. And if we keep adding the inverse of 6, we would get negative 6, negative 12, negative 18, negative 24, and so on this way. So you can see that this is in fact a subgroup of the integers, and it equals 6 times the set of integers, or all the integer multiples of 6. You can also see that this is the smallest subgroup that contains the element 6 because if we have 6, every other element in here must be in here based on the definition of a group. All right, so we said that 6 is a generator for this cyclic group. Now what about our original group that was the set of integers? Is this group cyclic? So can we find an integer that generates the entire set of integers? And the answer is yes, we can. Let's look at the element 1. We know that if we repeatedly add 1 to itself, we will get 1, 2, 3, and all the positive integers. Then we can also repeatedly add negative 1 to itself to get 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on, and this gives us the entire set of integers. So this means that 1 is a generator for the set of integers with addition. And from that we can say that this group is cyclic because we have found a generator. Let's look at another example. In this example, we have the set of integers modulo 8 with addition modulo 8. Now if we just randomly took an element out of this group, Let's say the element 3, we could write the cyclic subgroup generated by 3 by repeatedly adding 3 to itself modulo 8. So doing that we would get 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9 which is 1 modulo 8, 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7, 7 plus 3 is 10 which is 2 modulo 8, and 2 plus 3 is 5, and 5 plus 3 is 0 modulo 8. And we can see that this is actually our entire set of integers modulo 8. So that tells us that 3 is a generator and that our group is cyclic. But just to go one step further, notice that 3 is not the only generator. 1, 5, and 7 are also generators to this group. And there is actually a reason why these elements are generators versus the elements 0, 2, 4, and 6. The reason is that these elements are relatively prime to the number 8. And we'll actually see why that's true in some upcoming videos. But for now, I hope this helped you understand what a cyclic group is and what a generator is. So let's just go through a quick summary of what we've learned. If we have a group G, and notice that this group does not have to be cyclic, and we take any element little g from this group, then we know that this G written in between two brackets represents a subgroup of G. And in fact, we know that this actually represents a cyclic subgroup of G that is generated by the element G. We also know that if this cyclic subgroup generated by G is equal to our entire group, big G, then we know that the group is cyclic and G is a generator for our group. And remember that this generator does not have to be unique. We can have multiple elements that generate the group. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.